Our objective for today is the student will be able to understand and apply the concepts of inverse variation. Inverse variation is a relationship between two variables in that one variable increases as the other variable decreases by the same amount. Um, this is the second type of variation that we will discuss. We previously talked about direct variation, um, which is where one variable increases as the other increases by the same amount. The formula for inverse variation is y equals k over x, where k is a constant value. And the notation for this is y varies inversely with x. Okay, So when you see this, that's what that means. y varies inversely with x. Um, k is a constant value, just like it was with direct variation. So k is a, a never-changing amount. Since k is a constant, uh, we can find k given any point by multiplying x by y. So what we're doing here, if this is our y equals k over x, if we wanted to solve for k, we would multiply both sides of the equation by x. These would cancel and I'd have x times y equals k. And then we would know what our constant value is. Okay. Let's get into some examples. Example 1 says since k is a constant, we can, or sorry, uh, example 1 says y varies inversely as x and y equals 6 when x equals 4 over 3. Find the formula for y in terms of x. Okay, so let's just look at this first part. y varies inversely as x. Okay, so that means we're going to use the formula that we just talked about. y equals k over x. It also says that y equals 6 when x equals 4 over 3. So what we can do is plug in 6 for y and 4 over 3 for x. And we get uh, 6 equals k divided by 4 over 3. Lastly, what it wants is it wants us to find the formula for y in terms of x, right? So it wants something like this. It wants a formula for y in terms of x, which means that we can only have y and x as our variables. We can't have k. So what we need to do is find out what k is and plug it in so that we can rewrite this formula. We can find k over here using the information that we got from this line in the example. Okay? Um, so to find k, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by our x value, which is 4 over 3. These are going to cancel, and I have 4 over 3 times 6 equals k. Now I get it, it's a fraction. But when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. I can make 6 a fraction by putting it over 1, and then I just multiply straight across. Top times top, bottom times bottom. So k is going to equal 24 over 3, which is the same as 8. So k equals 8, right? I solved for k. The question, though, it didn't want k. It wanted a formula for y in terms of x. So what I'm going to do is take k and plug it into the formula for inverse variation. I'm going to plug my k value in so that when I do plug it in, it becomes a formula for y in terms of x. our formula. Part 2 of this example says find the value of y when x is 32. Okay, um, So find the value of y when x is 32. Because this is under the same set uh, of instructions, we're going to use the formula we just created over there for y in terms of x and plug it in here. So y 
equals 8 over x. We're using this because it's under the same set of instructions as part 1. Um, so find the value of y when x is 32. That means I'm going to plug in 32 to the x spot. So I have y equals 8 over 32. Now we just need to reduce this fraction and find our y value. Well, they're both divisible by 4, right? They're both divisible by 2. They're also both divisible by 8, right? 8 divided by itself, that's going to be 1. 32 divided by 8, it's going to be 4. So y equals 1 over 4. Let's go ahead and look at the third part of that example. It says find the value of x when y equals 56. Well again, this part 3 is still underneath the same set of instructions as parts 1 and 2. So I'm still going to use the formula that I found in example 1 to finish this problem up. So the formula from example one, again, that's y equals eight over x, okay? And this question wants us to know, find the value of x when y is 56. So I'm gonna plug 56 in for y and solve for x. Now this is where a lot of students kind of struggle. Um, they see x in the denominator and they're not sure how to get it out. A lot of times they'll say, oh, multiply by eight right? Because that's the other number on the same side as x. And they think, I need to get rid of 8. Really though, you need to get rid of the fraction. And to get rid of the fraction, we need to multiply both sides by the denominator. The denominator in this case is x. Okay, and it's alright, we can multiply both sides by x. It's fine, it's just going to move it over to the other side. So when we do that, these are going to cancel out. And I have x times 56 equals 8. Now this is a much easier problem to work with because I don't have a fraction and x is not in the denominator. Now all I have to worry about is getting rid of this 56 to get x by itself. To get rid of 56, I'm going to divide both sides by 56. And for right now, I have x equals 8 over 56. Again, when we give an answer, we want to put it in the simplest form possible. Um, 8 and 56. They're both divisible by 2, but 2 is going to be kind of a smaller number. It's going to create multiple steps. We always want to take the biggest number possible. 8 and 56 are both divisible by 8, so we're going to go ahead and do that. If I divide 8 by 8, I'm going to get 1. If I divide 56 by 8, I'm going to get 7. So x is going to equal 1 over 7. And again, it is okay to get an answer um, in the form of a fraction. It's not that you got it wrong, it is a possible solution. Um, if you were to put it in a decimal form, that's okay too. It is just in this case, we kind of want to stick with fractions.